Hello, my name is Jeff Oakson, and I direct the Oral Facial Pain Center at the University of Kentucky College of Dentistry. I also direct the Oral Facial Pain Graduate Training Program, which is a code-approved program in oral facial pain. And I wanted to share with you some information, because uh, what I'm doing right I've done now is I've taken, I have two textbooks you may be familiar with, and I've taken all the information from those textbooks and put it into 33 lectures, each one almost an hour long, that takes us from the very early understanding of occlusion, TM disorders, and oral facial pain. And the question you might ask is, why, do, why should I know about this as a dentist? Well, I think it's, you need to, because here's an interesting stat. They surveyed for 12 months uh, of, uh, in this study, they surveyed at dental offices, and they found that one out of six patients that came to the dental office was there because of pain. The most common pain complaint was dental pain, toothache. But the second most common was musculoskeletal pain which is TM disorders. In fact, this it is so common in population, 20, 10 to 20% of the general population have these conditions. 7% are seeking care. So they are coming into your office, the second most common pain complaint. And we dentists need to understand and appreciate that because sometimes there's some very simple things you can do to make a big difference in the quality of patients' lives. They don't always require a lot of reverse irreversible types of procedures. So I put this lecture series together and it's 33 hours, as I said, and I'm going to be talking about occlusion, where occlusion fits into dentistry and TM disorders. I'm going to talk about temporal mandibular disorders and also talk about oral facial pain. So it's going to take you all the way from the beginning to the end. And so some of the topics that I talk about are the importance of occlusion in dentistry. Because we need, as dentists, to understand that the way these teeth fit together must be in harmony with the, um, with the temporal mandibular joint. This is called orthopedic stability. And orthopedic stability is what makes this system function. So is occlusion important in dentistry? Absolutely. It's important to develop a sound masculatory system which will function over 80, 90 years of the patient's life. So we'll be, we'll be talking about that. Then this question comes up. Is occlusion important in TM disorders? Well, interesting enough, that's a second question, another question. And so I'll be sharing with you some of the etiological factors that we have to understand as dentists of what produces TM disorders. Some of those have to do with occlusion, and therefore we have a role in solving some of the TM disorders conditions, because if you have occlusion as a major etiological factor and you improve the occlusion, that patient will get well. And many of you have done that. You, you look at occlusion, it change it, and the patient is thankful. But then there's some patients out there who don't have occlusion as a major etiological factor, and because we don't identify that well in dentistry, we do our dentistry, and some of these other factors that are important are not changed, and therefore our dentistry fails. The, we change the occlusion, it gets better. And this is frustrating to us. And you need to know when occlusion is important and when it's not. And I'll try to share with you some information on when occlusion is important and when you might want to change a person's occlusion because it is related to the condition. We're going to talk about TM disorders, which are what? Musculoskeletal pain conditions of the masculatory system. And there's a variety of these conditions. They're not all the same. And here's five broad categories. Each one is treated differently. And therefore, we need to identify those because we just can't call these TMJ patients. Because TMJ patients is a big, broad statement. You, you don't have one treatment for that. There's multiple treatments for TM disorders. And we also need to appreciate that TM disorders is only one subcategory of oral facial pain. This is the classification I use in oral facial pain. All of these are pain conditions that I'll be talking about during this lecture series, which come into dental offices, and you, be the clinician, needs to understand, should I treat this or should I not? Because this, these ones now in yellow are TM disorders, and we dentists need to understand TM disorders because we're the only healthcare providers that offer care for this, successful care for this. But if the patient walks in, and, it, and it's not a TM disorder, but it's one of these others, then our treatment will fail. We need to appreciate that. And we don't need to know all about the details about all these, although I will be reviewing several lectures on migraine and other things that are that involve neuropathic pain conditions. We're going to talk about normal function of the joint. You as a dentist need to understand how this joint functions. Because in order to treat this patient successfully, if they come in with a dysfunction, you need to bring it back to function. And we'll be talking about some of the dysfunctions, like clicking joints, locking joints. I'll go through a whole series of these, and not only will I talk about those, but also talk about the management of these conditions. And we'll talk about the significance of oral facial pain because it is significant. 
It's interesting when you look at our cortex, this is the homoculus, and we section through the sensory cortex. What you begin to appreciate is that 75, 6, 65 to 75 percent of our sensory cortex is dedicated to two structures, our hands and our face. And when we have pains in these structures, it is very clinically significant. It's emotionally significant. We'll talk about how that fits in there. We'll talk about the concept of pain referral. Because what we see is if we take pain like the shoulder pain, it comes into the brain and brainstem. The cortex is perceiving that, but things happen as the pathways go up here. And we'll talk about how these changes occur in this brainstem. And they can excite a second pathway. And now the second pathway excites a process and the sensory cortex is stimulating two areas. And now the pain is coming from here, but felt here. This is the concept of pain referral. And pain referral occurs in the head and neck very, very frequently. And we dentists need to appreciate that so we can, we can address and treat where the pain is coming from, the source, not necessarily the site. We'll talk about how diagnostic blocks can help do this. You can identify where pain comes from if you're able to block the tissues which produce the pain. This is a, this is a, a, a block, the, the auricular temporal nerve block, which we're going to obliterate all the pain sensations from the joint. It's very diagnostic to say, is this really coming from the joint or not? And I'll share with you in two lectures a whole series of muscle injections and joint injections that you can provide patients to help differentiate pain. We'll talk about occlusal appliances. What is the appliance that you should use? When do you use? What type of appliance? Muscle pain, joint pain, are they different? I think they are different. We'll talk about the different appliances and what happens when they get, what happens when the patient responds well? What does that mean? We've got to talk about that. We'll, go to, we'll get outside of TM disorders and talk about things like migraine, tension type headaches. We'll also talk, talk about neuropathic pain. And I'll share with you some patients that have trigeminal neuralgia. When you see these patients, you'll be able to identify something that maybe you haven't seen in your practice too often. We'll also talk about some of the processing of neurological system that produces an ongoing nociceptive process, which leads to pain. And this is the neuropathic components of pain. We'll talk about each one of those and how they, how they show up. We'll talk about pain that's felt in teeth, but not coming from teeth. These are continuous dental alveolar pain, sometimes called persistent dental alveolar pain. So that we under, need to understand what this is. In fact, one lecture I have, I talk about eight different reasons that teeth hurt that have nothing to do with the pulps and the parallel structures. We need to know about them before we start doing root canals and extract teeth. We'll also talk about a new concept called occlusal dysthesia, by which the patient describes a problem with their bite, and yet there's really nothing wrong with the bite at all. It's the way the neurological system is bringing in information. And these are patients that were difficult because we do adjusting teeth and we just make them more and more sensitive to these problems. We're going to talk about the relationship between orthodontics and TM disorders. Is there a relationship? And we're talking about maybe the difference between patients and such. We're going to talk about the different types of appliances. I have one le uh, hour lecture of all these different kinds of appliances and ask the question, you know, what's the evidence? Is, this, is there strong evidence in science or is this some theories? We'll talk about some appliances we use outside of the area of TM disorders. And they have nothing to do with TM disorders. And the final one we're going to talk about is Botox. And I've been using Botox for nearly 15 to 20 years now. And I believe there is a place in dentistry for Botox. I'm not talking about aesthetics. I'm talking about muscle function. If you see muscles that are uh, this spastic activity, dystonia, pain, we're learning more and more about that. So I whole, have a whole lecture series on that. So I, like, I ask you if you're interested in any of these, you can go to my webpage, jeffoxen.net, and you can see all the different subjects that are there. And you can stream them and uh, instantly stream them or get them on a DVD, whatever you like. I hope you're interested in some of these things, and, and perhaps this information may be useful in building your practice and helping you treat the patients in your practice. Because this thing called oral facial pain and TM disorders is a lot of what we do in dentistry, and we need to be able to have, be the best dentist we can, the best healthcare provider we can, to solve some of these patients' problems. I hope you find some of this interesting. I look forward to meeting you sometime in the future.